Hi everyone, this is Thomas of Polyga, and I'm going to give a quick demo in of some of the new features that we have in 3.3.9. Uh, there's a lot of new features, but specifically I will be going over some of the new um, global coordinate system features that allow you to export your data in a specific coordinate system that we never had before. Um, in order to do some of this stuff, first you want to turn on our ground plane. Um, this new ground plane will now show you where 000 is in world space relative to your local part. As well as uh, this button here um, shows you where the local coordinate system is for a particular part. Uh, you can see when we select the part here, uh, there's two coordinate systems. One showing where the center point is for world space and where it is for the uh, worst local coordinate system for uh, the, the local object. And you can see here our zero point for the local object is kind of in our trip arbitrary spot. Um, so I'm going to go, we have a lot of other new features, but specifically I'm going to go over the new transform tools and the coordinate tool. Uh, first, the transform tool. Uh, transform tool is pretty straightforward. We've added some new rotation tools, so you can actually, and the rotation is going to be about its zero point, uh, but it's uh, you can now do some rotate over rotation over the specific axes as well as do some translation. Uh, you could do this before, but you can only do it with the mouse. So if you wanted to do something by specific increments, you couldn't. As well as you can see where the, uh, essentially the center point is uh, on the object. And you can see it update as I move it around. Uh, these buttons here allow you to save specific transforms, uh, reapply them to other scans, clear them, and also apply transforms to, to all new scans that get applied to an object as well. Um, which is very useful for comparison deviation. Uh, so for the local axis tool, the easiest one is, I'll start off with the select local center. So you can click select local center, click a spot on the map and you can, on the mesh, and you can see uh, the local zero, zero, zero point uh, goes to wherever it is that you've selected. Um, as well, you can do it automatically. So you can say, just move it to a box center, uh, which is the bounding box center here as well as the mesh center, which is slightly different than the bounding box center. Uh, but you can see it can just automatically uh, calculate that spot. As well as you have some uh, look at axes position too. So if you wanted to uh, rotate this mesh and face the uh, Y axis, you can just click on it. And all of a sudden the mesh is now facing the Y axis relative to its local coordinate system. Uh, be a little bit careful when you export this uh, under settings. You can export in world space or local space. So if you have it sit on world space, what you want to do is move this object to um, world space before you, to, you export it. But generally, I like to just, if I'm going to set the coordinate system, I export it out in local space. So this is the transform tool, and it gives you some quick and dirty tools to do some uh, positioning of the object as well as uh, the ability to change the local coordinate system here. Uh, this is fine for quick and dirty stuff, uh, but if you want to do something more exact, so let's see, I'm going to switch over to the coordinate tool here. Um, in this case, what I want to do is uh, exactly position my center position onto the center bottom. I want the Y facing up, and uh, I want the X facing one of these uh, coordinate systems. So uh, this part is a little bit more tricky because you've got to be a little bit more controlled about how you do things. Uh, but first, uh, first of all, uh, I want to get a point at the center of this and at the bottom of this uh, plane. So here, let me just reset my view. Center. I don't need my global for now, so I'm going to turn that off. Neither do I need my bounding box, so I'm going to turn that off as well. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plane from picking. Now that I've bought my bottom plane, uh, what I want to do is also want to create a, a top plane as well. So I'm just going to just go up to the top here, create another uh, plane based off of this top area here. And I'm just clicking points along this lip, and what this does is it'll um, create, a, create an average. Uh, I'm not happy with that one, so I'm going to do it again. So 
So now I have uh, two different planes, one at the top and one from the bottom. Uh, so next, I'm going to hide this for a second. Next, what I'll do is I want to create a point that's at the center of this. So I can have a tool here that's a cylinder. So first, I just need to create some points in on my cylinder. There we go, I've got all the points, oops, I've got all the points that I want selected. And then I can go click create, and it's gonna create a point in the middle of all those points that represents a uh, center cylindrical point. Once those points are selected, I don't need these intermediate points anymore. Uh, what I'll now do is uh, create two points, uh, one at the top of the plane and one at the bottom of the plane. can see here. What I'm doing is I'm slowly creating the points of my coordinate system, the x, y, and z positions, and that'll enable me to create a coordinate system that I can then use to uh, transform this part um, to exactly position it. Um, so now that gives me a nice clean uh, x center point and a lookup point, and what I want next is just a, uh, a point to look to the right, essentially. So what I'll do here is I'll just... Um, Pick a new point. Right. Right here. And that's going to be my right point. So from here, I can just uh, create my coordinate. My center point is going to be point 0.3. My, my up is going to be 2. And my look at point is going to be four. And you can see here, I'll just hide these. Uh, <clears throat> it's created a new coordinate system that's uh, it's exactly where I specified it and it's uh, precise and along this tube. So now, once I have this coordinate, I can uh, make sure to select the mesh, select the coordinate system and just press set. And you can see here, um, now those two match up. And now if I take this and, uh, so now if I take this and export it, what I do is I set this to local space on export projects. I click on this. I'm just gonna, let's say, export it into a STL desktop. Let me just rename this. There we go. Um, and now I can export it. I've quickly uh, switched over to SolidWorks um, and into our Extract 3D product to import in the uh, line turbine blade that we exported out of FlexScan 3D. Um, so I'm not going to center an import because that's going to ruin it. I just need to set the millimeters. So this is the mesh that I exported out of FlexScan 3D uh, that before that was in an arbitrary pos position. Uh, but now if you see that I turn on the planes, um, the mesh is, our mesh is exactly positioned at the 000 center point here. And if I import in our other mesh that we didn't adjust, uh, you can see the other mesh uh, that I didn't do the adjustment in is floating out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so hopefully this gives you a good idea of the usefulness of some of these new tools in FlexScan 3D. And when the, when you acquire the mesh in FlexScan, not only does it let you uh, get the data, but now lets you position the mesh properly so you can do something useful with it. Thanks a lot for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick demonstration of some of the new features that we have.